So CRISPR screen is a really, really powerful technique. And many, many scientists are starting to use CRISPR screens, especially for cancer research. Um, and one major project that's uh, conducted at the Broad Institute is called a DAP map or cancer dependency map. So the, if you remember uh, in the targeted therapy lecture, the Broad Institute has collected thousands of cancer cell lines and the, the expression, the mutation, the copy number variation of those cell lines have been previously characterized. And some of those have also gone through drug screens, chemical screens. But um, now the Broad Institute has also generated CRISPR screens in hundreds of cell lines. So in each cell line, it grows the cell line, infect the cell with the CRISPR library, knock out every individual gene in this cell line, and then look at the guide abundance in day zero compared to the guide abundance in, say, three weeks' time, and then look at the difference and assign a gene as being positively selected or negatively selected. And so by this time, the Broad Institute has uh, profiled indeed hundreds of cell lines, and this is just one example. Um, the x-axis is whether the, the gene is positively selected or negatively selected, and you can see in this gene it's, uh, it's, it's quite negatively selected. You can imagine this as a log fold change. It's very negatively selected, and the y-axis is the expression level of this gene, and this gene is RPS5. So let me ask the team, the, the class, is this gene important? Is this gene important? Yes, this gene is very important because if you knock out the gene, the cells are dying. This, these, these cells are having a negative selection on the, on the gene. In hundreds of cells, if you knock out this gene, the, the cell is dying. But is this gene interesting? At least in a cancer setting, this gene is not as interesting because it's what we call pan-lethal. It's probably, you know, like this is actually a ribosomal gene. Um, not just in cancer cells, every normal cell in the genome, if you knock out the ribosomal gene, this RPS5, the cell will die. It's not as good a cancer target, but what would be a potentially good um, cancer target gene is, um, this is another example. Um, the HER2 gene, the official gene name is called ERBB2. The x-axis is again CRISPR screen, and you can see, yeah, well, so this is zero. Um, it's a little bit negatively selected, but not too much. Um, you know, when it's kind of, you know, minus uh, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, it's not too bad. You know, whereas in here, you can see here, the log full change of the selection is minus one, meaning that on average, if you knock out this gene, the, the log fold change is minus one, which is really very negatively selected. And so this one, um, it's not as negatively selected. Most of the time, it doesn't have a very strong phenotype, except um, in some of these cells that they suddenly have a very, very strong selection. And if we look at the HER2 expression, these have very high expression, meaning that the cancer cells that have very high HER2 expression are super dependent on HER2. And if you knock out the gene HER2, this cancer cell will die. That's a very good cancer target. And indeed, there are cancer drugs. And um, if you look at the lineage, uh, these orange ones are actually uh, in here. It's a ER negative HER2 positive breast cancer. And so these have high level of HER2 expression and the super dependent on HER2 uh, levels. And so if you have either a small molecule or antibody against the HER2, the cell will die. Indeed, there are HER2 drugs that target these kind of cancers, right? This is, uh, you know, you can see this from the uh, relationship between the gene expression and the um, essentiality of the genes. You can see these targets. Uh, this is another example. Um, you can see this is BRAF. If you look at all the cells um, 
most of the time, BRAF does not have a very strong phenotype. It's very, you know, the CRISPR screen selection is close to zero, except that some of them are, are, are very negative. And what are they? The depth map on the website, can you can actually evaluate um, mutation levels of genes. And you can see, turns out, these cell lines all carry the BRAF mutation. Um, and this is the BRAF hotspot mutation. And these genes are now super dependent on the BRAF gene, even though their expression level may not be very high. You know, these genes have high BRAF expression, but they are not so essential. But if they have the BRAF mutation, they are super dependent on BRAF. Uh, if you remember, BRAF is a kinase. It needs normally uh, it needs upstream growth signal in order to grow but with the mutation it does not need the upstream signaling the, the, the uh, gate is always on and that's how a cancer cell can have uncontrollable growth and so um, this tells us that if a cancer cell has a BRAF mutation it should be super sensitive to a BRAF inhibitor and that's how people develop BRAF inhibitor also to be used in the BRAF mutant uh, tumors. Um, in the uh, dependency map uh, original study, um, they also observed this particular situation. Um, when they look at the uh, RPL17 dependency score, and on the y-axis, they look at the RPL17 copy number, they notice this very good positive co correlation. It suggests that when the uh, this gene have lower copy, so or, you know most of the cells should have. Sorry, this is a log ratio. Zero means normal two copy, and minus means there's copy number loss, and positive means there's copy number amplification. And so what this result means is that when the cell is losing one copy of the gene it will become more essential because you only have the remaining copy making not so not enough uh, expression of that gene, then it becomes essential. If you knock out the gene, it really becomes a bottleneck. Um, and so they see a lot of those genes like this. They call it cyclops, like copy number related essential genes or something like that. And so um, this also indicates what people call hap haploid, in haploid in insufficiency, meaning that you need both copies. If there is one copy lost, the cell is super sensitive for the other, for, for the remaining copy. And so these are also important. If you in cancer cells see this type of situation, you can use it to target the cancer cells. The normal cells still have two copies. Then you, you use the drug to inhibit this gene, the normal cells will be spared. Okay, so that's another copy, uh, another uh, application. Uh, CRISPR screens can also be used with drug uh, treatment. And so uh, initially, we use a CRISPR library, which have uh, like photos. So each CRISPR virus contain a different photo. Um, to knock out a different gene, you infect the cell with this pool of, um, of uh, the, 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 the CRISPR, and each cell will only take up one guide RNA to knock out one gene. Um, and then um, you can first do a control experiment. This is like day zero. You just sequence directly, uh, which give you, you know, just initial guide RNA abundance. But then at this point, you can grow the cell with a drug treatment. And, uh, and then you can see which are which cells are negatively selected, uh, meaning that, um, well, so you can sequence the, the cells that, um, that um, basically they, they, all the genes, sorry, all the cells that are sensitive to the, the gene are, 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 um, are, are gone and the remaining cells are, are, are all negatively, uh, sorry, are, are all resistant to the, to the drug, meaning that if you knock out that gene, the cell will become resistant. The other is a positive screen for the drug sensitive cells. You ask which gene uh, you knock out will actually make the cell even more sensitive to the drug. And so I wanna show you an example. So supposedly um, we do the control. So this is one example, we treat the cell um, and we 
collect four samples. One is um, without the drug treatment, what is happening on day zero versus day 21. The other is with the drug treatment, we collect the cells at day zero and day 21. Um, sometimes this, these day zero can be the same sample because you, when you just treat the cell, there's nothing happening. So you could use the same day zero conditions. And so when we use the, the drug treatment at day 21 compared to the day zero, you can look at a differential abundance and that will give you a kind of log flow change. Uh, this is a the control, and in the tr treatment one, you can also look at the yeah so the the twenty one day compared to the day zero, and to look at full, uh, log flow change. And so overall, if you look at this, um, it should be positively correlated because a lot of genes, regardless of whether you have drugs or not, you knock out the gene, the cell is gonna die, and some genes you knock out the gene, the cell is gonna grow faster, and so vast majority of the genes are not directly related to the drug. They just have its own phenotype of making the cell grow faster or slower. But what we are interested in is the difference. What genes knock out to make the cell having a differential sensitivity when you treat the drug or not? And so when you look at, you know, what are the, these really positive ones versus these really negative ones? And we can look at this, um, that will actually give us uh, the, 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 the genes that are interesting. Um, for example, when we do this uh, with the BRAF, um, so this is a BRAF mutant melanoma. We also treat the cell with a BRAF inhibitor and we ask um, which genes knockout will make the cell sensitive to the BRAF inhibitor. And then one important drug, uh, gene we see is CDK6 which is on this end, meaning that when we treat the cell with the drug, with the BRAF inhibitor, if you can knock out the CDK6, or, uh, the cell will die even faster. And indeed, there is a CDK6 inhibitor suggesting that for those BRAF mutant cells, if you inhibit BRAF and inhibit CDK6 together, the cell will die faster and will not develop drug resistance. Whereas uh, these genes on the top are ones that if you get rid of that gene, they will become resistant to the original drug. And those would be the potential resistance mechanism. And so using this approach, we can actually look at, based on the genes on this end and this end, based on the expression of the original cell, we can see which cancer cells can respond to the drug, which cells will be resistant to the drug. For example, if these genes are low, they will be resistant to the drug. But if these genes are low, they will be sensitive to the drug. And you can also use it to identify drug combinations to overcome the resistance. Okay, so that's kind of how CRISPR screens can be used um, to look at cancer vulnerabilities, understand the drug mechanism, understand the re re resistance mechanism, and also help you identify drug combinations.